Genesis. From verse 26 to verse 41. And we will go to Genesis chapter 3. And we shall read from verse 7 to verse 8.
Holy Spirit of God. How many people here are what? How many people here are been what? I'm surprised. At the end of service, you have a different perspective. Praise be to God. Even students work, they have school work, they have home work. Even those that stay at home work, they have housework. Praise be to God. So those that go to office work, they have office work. The point I want to drive home is that we all. So if you are not working, then you should not eat. That's what the Bible says. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. Okay. Being paid and not being paid for your work is something different. You should find someone. Praise be to God. The Bible we began this year with a very clear message that 2022 is our year of dominion. And that is exciting in itself. But we need to come to a point and ask ourselves what is dominion? Because unless you understand what dominion is all about, you will not understand what your assignment is. And it is very important because when you understand what dominion is all about, then you are able to locate your assignment in this grand agenda of dominion. When God created man, the scripture says, God said, let us create man. Previously, when you read the whole text, God is saying, let them, let them, let them, let them, let them. Let them. When he comes to man, he says, let us. And we began to look at the first, the things that God did with man. And the first thing that God gave man in order for man to have dominion, was his image. In other words, God gets a part of him and places it in man. So the Bible tells us that God molded dust and then breathed into the nostrils of this dust and man became a living being. The story is told and it is a very funny story. Of a young child who went to the mother and said, Man, I've heard that we were found in dust. The man said, Yeah. Said, And to dust we shall return. Said, Yes. So we came out of dust. Yes. And we are going to dust. Said, Yes. So this son looked at the mother and said, Man, said, Yes. I looked under my bed and I realized somebody is either coming or going. And you get it next year. So, what he wanted to say is either somebody is going to be formed out of the dust or somebody is returning to the dust. The story the first thing God gave man is image. The next thing God gives man is likeness. Likeness is function. Last week we saw the third thing God gives man was access to his presence. And I want to dwell a little on that because the Bible says that God planted in the garden in the east of Eden. And we saw what Eden meant and we understood that. For God to create man, he spoke to himself. So you as an individual require the presence of God in order to thrive, in order to have to live. For many of us who want to do it independent of God, and that independence is what causes us to sleep. It is what causes us to die. You need God's presence more than anything. You need to rely on God. You need you thrive in God's presence. If I may put it this way. So God, the Bible says, after He had created man, He then plants a garden. Say, God is what? He then plants a garden. So 
amazing. God is the first agriculture resource. So for you who think farming is not profitable, you need to go back to the beginning. God was the first farmer. Can I hear the name? He said, I don't have many farmers here. But when you read the scriptures, he was the first farmer. He planted a garden. And after God has planted this garden, the Bible says, when God got the man whom he had created, and then God blessed him in the garden to to it, to it, to it. So man's first occupation was what? So taking care of his staff. So what has dominion got to do with the garden? His experience in the garden is what would help him to be able to have dominion outside the garden. Remember, this was to have dominion over all the earth. Yet God does not release him to go everywhere. God places this boundary called a garden, which he plants. And after he has planted this garden, he then takes this man, brings him to this garden, and gives him the instruction to build to this garden. So what has the garden got to do with the dominion? The garden has everything to do with dominion because man needed Has not planted anything. He has seen God plant. Now God tells him, I want you to take care of what I have planted. If you are successful in this project, then it is the basis of this that will give you dominion over everything else that I have created. And that is a very important principle, the principle of small beginnings. We say many of us want to begin big, we want to begin large, you want to have everything in place. Yet, the small beginnings are very important because it is from the small beginnings that we are able to stretch our muscles. It is with the small beginnings that we are able to have a perfect vision. With the small beginnings, that when you make a mistake with a small beginning, it is a small mistake. If you have a big beginning and you make one mistake, it blows you up. Praise be to God. I, I, I saw someone who came to me and said, Pastor, I need a million to start. Because I said, You need a million? Do you know what it means to lose 70% of a million? When you lose 70% of a million, you've lost 700,000. When you lose 70% of 100,000, you've lost 70,000. So work with the 100,000 until you have the capacity, until you have the understanding of what it takes, so that when the million comes, you are not losing that one million. Small beginnings. So it begins with the God. And God tells them, He says, the Bible tells us, Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. God, after this, say God bless them. And God, do what? Fruitful, multiply. Wonderful destruction. What did he tell them? Do what? 
fruitful. You have to bear fruit. Do what? Multiply. Uh-huh. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Have to be. Praise be to God. Wonderful instruction. When he asks, behold, verse 29, he says what? See, I have given you everything. I have given you seed. To you it shall be fulfilled. And every tree that has what? That has fruit, which has what? Seed. That shall be for you food. In other words, everything you want to consume should have seed. Why? Because when God had created man, He placed him there. Then the Bible says that God planted a garden. So, what does man see God do? Man sees God plant seed. And then God tells man, now that I've planted the seed, you need to take care of this plant until the year the harvest. So the harvest is what will be for you food. Then what happens? In order for you to have dominion, you then take the seed and plant the word. So that the seed bears what? And then you do what? You eat the fruit and plant the word. And the seed bears what? Then you eat the word and plant the word. Next, so that is the cycle of dominion. But what happens to us? We eat both the seed and the what? And we say that we are going to have what? Dominion. In 2022, it's a neighbor. You know their name? Now you know it. So lay back. In 2022, please don't eat both the seed and the fruit. You are not an animal. Look at what the Bible says. It says, to man, he said, you what? Behold, I have what? Given you every what? Every heart that has seed in it. And then he goes on to say what? And every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. And he goes on and says, but to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, that I have given what? In which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. Why? Because for them, they are not to plant. Who plants? So everything that comes to you, every money that comes to you, every talent that comes to you, every resource that comes to you, every grace that comes to you, bears it. So everything that comes to you is not just for you. There has to be something planted. And this is not just money. See, when we talk about seed for you, 
the first thing you say now, Pastor, is going to talk about money. No. Praise be to God. Everything about your life, your life is a word, a seed, I told you. And it is a seed of what? Greatness. It is the seed that contains the potential of God, the power of God. But how does that compare to dominion? It compares to dominion when you understand that your life is not for you. Your life bears a seed, and that seed must be. So man is in the sky, but the objective is to have dominion. So everything he does in this garden is preparing him for the grand stage of dominion. And so many of us, that's where we miss it, because we want and yearn for the grand stage. But the Bible says, who has despised the day of small beginnings? What happened to the children of Israel? The Bible gives us a story. One of the Egyptians, Isaac, he is in the land that God has promised is a blessing. And the famine strikes. And the Bible says, Isaac wants to commit the same mistake his father made to go down to Egypt. And God said, Don't go. And the Bible says, And Isaac sold in the land in the midst of a famine. And you obtain the habit. So perception is very important. When you look around and it doesn't look like it is fertile, it is fertile. Why? Because God has decreed it. Some situation happens to the children of Egypt during the time of Joseph. The famine strikes the land. You see, many of us think when famine strikes, when you have scarcity, then it's not time to plant. But that's how we treat it. And let us, it is time to plant, whether in season or out of work. Or out of season. Praise be to God. Now, some may say, no, you know, Pastor, what happened? They might see it and then God. Customer. No, work is not a curse. Say it again. Say it again. Say it later. Work is not a curse. Work did not come after the fall. Say it. Say work came before the fall. And why was it important for man to dwell in this garden? Because there are some vital lessons God wanted man to understand, which He wanted us to understand. When man begins to look and turn over his plans, there's very vital lessons about life that we will understand. One, that life moves in circles. Life moves in what? The point is, it will not always be planting season. There will be a time of planting. There will be a time of work. Then there will be a time of work. Harvest. The key denominator there is work. So work. So you plant your work. Working. The weeds come up your work. Then the harvest to your work. Then the second thing you wanted man to understand that what you plant 
gives after its own kind. What you put in produces after its own kind. But it produces much more and it produces much later. So, right now in the beginning, it does not look like it will bear fruit. But it calls for patience. The wonder the Bible comes to us, the Old Testament believers, and cautions us concerning patience. It says, Count it all joy when you go through the next one. God is knowing this, but the trial of your word, faith produces what? Patience. And it says, Let patience have its perfect work, so that what? At the end of it all, you go out will be complete, like nothing. The only way you can come to that place where you lack nothing is when you plant and are patient enough to wait for the harvest. Growing up, we had this small garden, so we planted some seeds. So the next day, we went to dig them up and see how they were doing. No progress. So we put them back. So the next day we went back, dug them up. No progress, we put them back. The next day we went back, dug them up. No progress, we put them back. It got frustrated after several days, we threw them away. And they go. It's pretty good. The point is this is every time we want to dig them up, we are delaying the process of generation. Seed thrives in its environment, which is the ground. It does not thrive while it is still with you. So the next time you saw some love, please don't go to check whether that love is beautiful. The thing we say is, test your bread upon the waters, and you do it. You recover it after many days. Even when it came after the curse, God comes back to Noah. Genesis 8.22, and it says what? As long as the earth remains. As long as the what? The earth remains. In other words, as long as this earth is still in existence, seed and harvest. Let's stop there. It says what? Seed. And what? Say it again. You are speaking to Christ. Say it again. Say one more time. So what does that mean? Between seed and harvest, there is what? Time. But this time is to the what? It's stuck to the what? It's stuck to the what? To the seed. That's why the Bible says it is seed time. Is that seed what? Time. The time is stuck to the what? The time is not stuck to the sower. The time is stuck to what is planted. In other words, whatever you plant, one will be after its kind. Two, it will come much later. Three, it will be more than what you planted. So the next time you are planting something, ask yourself, do you want more of it? So before you plant some heat, because it will produce after its what? And it will produce much what? Much later, and it will produce much what? 
much more. Say it one. After its kind, much later, and much more. But back to the principle, it does not take away the fact that you are created for it. Number two. What else did he have to learn from the plants? The second thing he had to learn from the plants was the fact that life on this side of time is limited in his plan. So there is nothing he planted that was going to remain the same. It grew and it died. He had to do it. To plant again. You see, many of us live on this side of time, like we have all the time. Last week we understood the scripture says we have this treasure in our vessel. We forget one thing that yes, we have the treasure, but it is in a vessel or a jar of clay. And because it is in a jar of clay, this jar of clay is subject to the in other words, it is not going to be here forever. There are things that you can do in your teens. There are things that you can do as you approach 20 that you will not be able to do when you get to 40. So every day you celebrate your birthday, get to know. You are not only growing wiser, but you are growing too at your expiry. So enjoy the time that God gives you. Can I hear an amen? Principle number three that man had to learn in the garden, why God had to place him in the garden to tend to it, was the fact that he needed to see and understand that there is no secret to how far you can go. You can go so fast if you are blessed in the right environment. So by man taking care of this girl, he understood that whatever he planted, if he created the right environment, it will go. The same way with his life, the life and mind, if we ourselves in the right environment. There is no ceiling to how far we can go. There is no ceiling to how fast we can go in the Lord. That's why He places it in the garden of Eden. That spot, that moment in God's presence. Why? Because you and I grow so fast in the presence of God. We don't have a ceiling to what our potential can reveal. The only problem is that we become like the prodigal son. After we have seen it work, we want to go and work it out this way. And as you know the story, nothing good came out of it. But what are the circumstances? One, you need to have a willing heart. Say a willing heart. Two, you need to have a listening heart. And listening heart. Three, you need to have an obedient heart. Say so obedient heart. What is the first heart? What is the second heart? What is the third one? That's why he comes to Isaiah and says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the Lord. In God, success is predictable. Can I say it again? In God, success is what? Predictable. So 2022 can be your year of dominion, but it is the matter of the heart. How willing is your heart to obey what God is saying? How willing is your heart? To listen to what God is saying. Uh, 
Jesus gives us his secret to success. John chapter 5, he says, the son can do nothing except what he sees the father what do. And he says, what I see the father do, I do in like manner. So everything he says, I'm just looking on to what my father is doing. Okay. That's why when you come to Christ, okay, when you do it, come to Christ. He gives you the word, the Holy Spirit. Why? Because He says, and it shall come to pass that what? So I pour out my spirit upon all what? Flesh. And their sons and daughters will do what? Who do what? Who do what? Their young men shall do what? See visions. Shall see what? Vision, see what? Vision. Vision is not eyesight. Vision is seeing something that is in the future. The old man shall do what? Dream dreams. Why? It is the mind then that God is magnifying to what he wants you to do. And until you come to that place, that's why I cannot overemphasize the fact of what prayer does in the life of a believer. The reason we don't see the vision, the reason we don't have the dream, is because we have not come to that place of opening up ourselves to say, Lord, what is it? Lord, how is this going to be? Because it is at that moment that you receive the word. And when you receive the word, don't try to be like me. You say, how is it going to be possible? This is my condition. Praise be to God. We need to come to that place of willingness. God blessed him in the kind of world because the garden was his learning experience. By looking, by turning to the plants, he was learning that things grow when you take care of them. Things what? When you do it. Whatever you don't take care of will not grow. Your talent will still remain your talent if you don't take care of it. Then. Your skills will remain your skills. Don't take care of them. They will do what? They will die. Why? Because you have this treasure in what? In the other investments. Number four is that the reason he places in the big garden is to see the use these trees provide to the environment, to the to their surroundings. When the trees grow, what happened? They provide the catchment, they purify the air, they provide the oxygen that the animals used, they provide the food for the animals, they provide the shelter. In other words, they were useful. Only when they grow. If they remain as seeds, they will never be useful. When they grow, then they become more useful. In the same way, your life and I becomes useful when we grow. So they will grow up. Thank you. 
26. Are we together? Are we ready? What does it say? For you are all sons of God. For you are what? All sons of God. In what? In Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, all of us become what? Sons of who? God. Okay, why? For as many as are baptized in what? In Christ have what? Have put on Christ. Okay? And there is neither Jew and Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor what? Amen. You are all one in Christ Jesus. In other words, there are no boundaries, there are no limitations. Okay? There are no limitations, there are no prioritizations. No, we are all one. One, we all have the ability in Christ Jesus. Okay? And it says, and if you are what? And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed according. In other words, he says, and if you belong to Christ, then everything that God promised to Abraham, remember God promised Abraham that I'm not going to just bless you, but I'm also going to bless your seed. And through your seed, all nations will be blessed. And in Christ, we understand that Christ is Abraham's seed. But Christ became the first fruit, so we are Abraham's seed after Christ. So we have the blessing of God, of God upon our lives. We have the potential to be a blessing to many other people. Praise be to God. Chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Now I say that, in other words, you are Abraham's seed and the heirs according to the word. Promise. In other words, you are an heir to who? To Abraham. Right? You say I'm an heir. Okay. Now it goes on to say what? Now I say to you that what? The heir. Uh -huh. As long as it's a what? As long as it's a what? As long as it's a what? He is no what? Does not defy at all from slave. Although his word, master of all. Can I say some masters here? Yes. You have dominion. Yes. You are the master of all. Yes. But what is preventing this? As long as you are still a child. I need to grow up. So the faster you grow, the better for you. Your limitation is not demons. Your limitation is not curses. Your limitation is the fact that you have not grown. Where do you grow? The presence. That's your environment. May I add this? Growth in the spiritual is not a function of time. Growth in the spiritual is a function of obedience. So you can be 20 years in church and still remain in what? The body grows, but the spirit is what? Right. Why? When they talk about the word, you don't want to listen to it. When they talk about Bible study, you don't want to come. When they talk about praise, prayer, you don't want to do it. You don't want to go. When they talk about fasting, you say, no, I think I may get upset. You don't fast, okay? Praise be to it's okay. 
But what is it that is happening? You are still stamping. You are becoming a what? A child. And although you are the master of all, you are not any different from a slave. So you think you are bound. You are not. You are just a child. Say, neighbor, go on. In 2022, we have some growing up to do. And the Bible will go through to say, go his master, but his dad will advance to. His what? He is blessed under the what? Guardians and what? Stewards until the appointed time. By the Father. In other words, God is saying, if you grow to this level, then you can have this. If you grow, it doesn't say, it, it doesn't say when you make 12 or when you make 18, then you can drive, have a driving permit. No. It says, <laughs> like they say in Uganda, if you make 18, then you can vote. Okay, forget the other circumstances. Okay, this is when you come to 21, then you can drive. Okay? Amen? Amen. The Father is also saying, please do it. When you come away, then you can what? You can access this. There are certain things that you will not access in the Spirit until you have Stand up with your feet. So God places man in the body to tend it, but also to learn from it. In 2021, help us to go raise the signs in the presence of the Father. King of God, we give you praise. We thank you. We adore you. We magnify you. Lord, I have spoken your truth as you have laid it upon my heart. I have spoken in the realities. I pray, Lord, you address specifically by your Holy Spirit those areas of our lives that need growth. Give us the strength, give us the tenacity, give us the fortitude to move forward, give us the courage to be able to stand up and address those areas of growth in our lives. Help us, King of Glory, by your Holy Spirit, that our lives will be a reflection of your glory, that our lives will be a reflection of your love, that our lives will be a reflection of your omnipotence, our lives will be a reflection of your love, your mercy, your power, your majesty. I bless this, your people, this week as they go. Preserve and protect them. Go before the king of glory. Bring down the mountains before them. Fill the valleys before them this week, for Lord of God. Put a word of testimony upon their lips. This week, Lord, we thank you before God for what you are doing in their lives. Bless the families, Lord. Bless the work of their hearts, Lord. But above all, Lord, may your presence be a real manifest reality in their lives. Something undeniable. Give us a passion. Give us a hunger for your presence. Give us a hunger to seek and plant and young enough to be. This week, bless them, Lord. In the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, those people say, Amen. And I may take out your own friend we need to give to the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And ask your people to bless them. Bless the work of their hearts, Lord. Bless them this week, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity that we will have to give in your arms. In Jesus' name, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us. Now, if you remember, amen. Amen. The ashes are passing by. Please put your offering. God bless you. Bless you. Don't forget our programs this week. Please participate. God bless you. Bless you.